Hey guys, welcome into the Bear With Us podcast. I'm Jack. He is Frank. Uh, coming at you to talk some quarterbacks. We're going to talk some quarterbacks in the draft. Going to talk about our LGBTQ B1. Caleb Williams. <laughs> I had to plug that. That was a good tweet. I don't know who said it first. I'd, I'd, get, I'd give credit, but come on. that's, that's It's the funny. idea that counts. That person. Yeah. Fuck that person. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you put it on social media. Yeah, it's, come on. It's, it's up for grabs. It's up for grabs. Uh, no, Frankie, Frankie and I are going to rank uh, the rookie quarterbacks as we always do year in, year out. Um, you know, we, we I, I'd say we typically do these rankings for a couple of reasons. Number one, obviously, with the Bears having a need at quarterback after trading Justin Fields, obviously, it makes sense to look at the quarterbacks and see if there's anyone even even close to to Caleb Williams that the Bears should possibly be considering. And of course, you know, we, Frank and I do dabble. In some in some dynasty football, I've won a league. He's won a league, two times. We're experts. We're fucking experts. All the right, two time champ. The, <laughs> we're fucking experts here. Uh, I know that there are are people who'd probably disagree with that, but they can go fuck themselves. They're not on the podcast, so I can say whatever I want. They may listen to the podcast though. Yeah, and I, I still say they can go fuck themselves. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk some quarterbacks, Frankie. Uh, let's talk some quarterbacks. So I, I, I want to do this because because we, we've done this a few different ways. We've, we've started with the obvious one to one through five. We started from the bottom and, and you know, like uh, like all rappers say, and, and worked our way to the fucking top by pulling on our bootstraps, our quarterback bootstraps. You're goddamn right. Uh, how, how would you like to proceed with today's events? Um, I think we started five. And go to one. I think everyone knows who number one is. I, it, it, to me, I'm to the point where I've looked at these guys. I've watched their film. I've watched other people's breakdowns who are smarter than me. Um, I feel like I have a really good sense of what I personally am looking for in a quarterback prospect because of the failed developments of Mitch Trubisky and Justin Fields. And let me not pin it all on the Bears. Also, their shortcomings as well and sort of signs pre-draft that, you know, had I scouted earlier, probably would have caught on to and, and, and you know, had better a better feel for things going in and like, uh, let me not say a feel like just more ample worries, like uh, yeah. things that, you know, maybe you see in year two that haven't progressed, things like that. Um, and I say all that to say, I think if you have a different number one, you're just trying to go against the grain at this point. Like it's, it's to a point where he skews these other quarterbacks. Cause if he didn't exist, you'd probably look at them in a little bit better of a light. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I, I think, uh, you're, you're trying to be edgy. You're trying to just have a different take for sake of having a different take. Uh, you're probably afraid of of your own sexuality. You're not comfortable with your own sexuality. That, you know, you're that not may be it too. With, yeah. You know, I, I think a little bit. Can I just say, can we, we, can we just talk about Caleb for a second? If he's gay, that would be the funniest thing ever. Because I would just love to see Bears fans just <laughs> come to grips with having the best quarterback they've ever had. And by the way, just assuming he's gay based off of those videos is just the funniest fucking thing. It's just like, man, people just want some reason to not like this guy. I, I, and that would be, me, I can't understand that. that would be a very dumb reason to not like him. Like I, like, Oh, absolutely. I think, I think there came a point in Dennis Rodman's career where it was pretty generally accepted. Like, He's doing a little something, you know, maybe bisexual. I don't know how he identifies, but you sort of knew he was cross-dressing. He was doing his thing. Again, this is come. This is no judgment at all. I'm pro LGBTQ. I consider myself Same an ally. Um, but you know, the the people who think that this city, for the most part, you're gonna have your minorities, your bigots, and things that are gonna care about that. No one's gonna fucking care. We love Dennis. We love Dennis Rodman. We love them coming in the 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 brides. Uh, what is that? The dress, like. Yeah. It was phenomenal. All we need, Caleb, is to be good. Gay, straight, bisexual, anywhere in between, non-binary. We don't fucking care. We just want we just want him to come in and ball. Ball. Be I will four, it, be our first four thousand yard passer, please. It will be Let's very funny though to see the homophobes squirm if <laughs> he does confirm that he's not a heterosexual male. Which again, based off that video, like come on. The, the more the more I think about it though. For the sake of things, I would rather him be non-binary than gay because that would be that would make them squirm even more. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that'd be that'd be wild. That'd be yeah. some wild stuff. Dude, Fox, um, could you imagine the Fox News headline just woke Bears quarterback ooh. goes nine yeah. by nine? Yeah, oh, they're they're waiting. They're waiting. Oh and especially, man, especially especially the people who wanted to keep Justin Fields just looking for reasons. Oh here. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's uh, silly. But to, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say on the, on the quarterback side because that that is what we wanted to talk about. Just just starting with Caleb, he's obviously our our clear number one arm talent is there. Uh, the the it sounds like the person Ryan Poles basically confirmed all but confirmed everywhere this past week that he's yeah he he found the player he knows the person he's all good he found players that don't just like him his teammates love him can't find a single person with something bad to say which you know kind of draft talk but I I'm not I, it, it's very clear that the Bears are taking Caleb Williams unless something crazy happens with like the injury concerns, which I don't think there are any. I haven't seen any. There's no yep. there's no. Uh, what, what was it for? Justin? What was it for? Justin? He uh, uh, the epilepsy. See, I, I don't even remember epilepsy. You can tell how how much that has impacted his NFL career so far. Uh, looking at Matt Miller for ESPN, his his player comps. I've always loved Matt Miller all the way back when he was at Bleacher Report. Uh, he has uh, a player comp. For Caleb Williams, um, and it's Aaron Rodgers, and I found that to be a very interesting player comp because obviously the conversation has been uh, around Patrick Mahomes and how oh, he's the same size as Kyler, and I I kind of like the Aaron Rodgers comp, and I'll, I'll read what he said. He said Williams is an elite prospect with upper level arm strength, running ability, field vision, and poise. There are times when he for- forces some passes, and he'll have to get the ball out faster in the NFL but he has shown he can carry a team and create big plays with the second effort mobility, diverse arm angles, and arm talent. Williams finished 11th in QBR last season, 82.4, and threw for 3,633 yards, 30 touchdowns, and five interceptions. He is the overwhelming favorite to go first overall in April. Yeah, I I think when you think of modern quarterback play, I think Caleb Williams fits right into what you're looking for, especially with that arm angle stuff. The, the Matt Stafford's, the Patrick Mahomes type plays that you just think about when you think of NFL quarterback highlights. I think Caleb can do it all. He's the clear number one. Let's not get it twisted. Agreed. Uh, and just for clarity's sake, we're going one to five here. No, I was just saying we might as well get one out of the way. Oh, okay. I'm cool with that. Yeah. No, I- I'm cool with that. Yeah. I think um, it was hard for me to pin one particular player comp for him. You see some Aaron Rodgers stuff where he leaves his feet, the arm angle. I think the biggest thing that he compares to Aaron Rodgers to is that quick release. I mean, yeah. you even Mahomes has a tad bit of a windup. This is not, not a negative thing. If any Chief can't, Chiefs fan just randomly comes across, is like, fuck you, Pat is the fucking, he's already on his way to being the GOAT. He's clearly the best of his generation. I mean, he's in year, I mean, what, like five, I'm already comparing him to Tom Brady. Like, this dude's on a different level. Um... But when you think about that quick of a release, you think like Dan Marino, Steve Young, Aaron Rodgers. Like you're, you're just talking like flick of the wrist type of thing. It's it's absurd how fast those guys get the ball out. And that's where I saw a lot of that in him. But you did see some Kyler Murray in there with the scrambling ability, with the elusiveness in the pocket. Maybe I don't think he's as athletic as Kyler is. Um, but you just you see that. You see the extension of the plays. Um and then you just see like these the crazy arm angles and in like not afraid to make tight window throws that you get out of Patrick Mahomes. Um yeah. it's like to to a point where, you know, you, using those as a barometer, I think his floor is Kyler Murray. Uh, K- Kyler Murray. And I think his ceiling is a Patrick Mahomes type. I think getting into some of the things that Matt Miller talked about, and this is what I saw a lot on film as well, is I would say his biggest negative right now is he likes to play hero ball. Now, yeah. is that a product of the talent around him? Because when I look at the 2022 tape, it was a lot less of that than the 2023 tape. He played much more in structure. The ball was there on time. Anticipatory throws, getting through reads, extending plays only really when necessary, running only when necessary. 2023 was a lot more he- hero ball, quote unquote. But again, it's like, is that hero ball or are your receivers not really open, right? And right. Um, I think I, I lean a little bit more towards that, but there still were those times in 2022 when he held the ball a little bit too long, wanting to make the big plays. But again, my philosophy has always been, and we talked about this when it came to Justin Fields as well. Obviously, it didn't pan out with him, but I will always take a player 
who holds the ball a tad bit too long looking for the deep shots because you can't coach that aggression into a player. You can coach right. some aggression out of a player to make the smarter plays. We saw it with Pat Mahomes. We saw it, even to agree, we saw it with Justin Fields, where it's like to a point where you probably got coached out of it a little too much by Eberflus and right. Getze, right? Like we've seen this right. before, but the general philosophy of, I would rather my quarterback be aggressive, tight window throws, not afraid to make the throws versus the other way around. I don't want a Derek Carr. I don't want an Alex Smith. All due respect, they've had good careers, but I want an aggressive down the field type of guy who you can teach the intermediate stuff to. You can sort of coach that into them. Um, I think the only other negative that I saw in Caleb and this one, he, I should have thought this way anyway, but Matt, uh, um, Ryan Poles really sort of sunk this in my head. Of And, and let me say, it, it was his footwork can be a little bit sloppy at times. Now, when he throws the ball, his lower body agrees with his upper body, but it's the drop back sometimes, it's getting out of the pocket where you can clean a lot of that up. And that was a lot of what Ryan Poles talked about in their process when they drafted Patrick Mahomes. His tape looked very similar to that. And sometimes his lower body didn't even agree with his upper body. He just had so much arm talent that he was able to make the throws in college. But that's coaching stuff. And Mike Tomlin even talked about that unrelated some months ago. Like, I don't run from coaching. If you know, if I see someone who has clear talent, I'm never going to run from that because I we I have a faith in my ability to coach players. Um, and I think that's sort of Matt Eber or uh, Ryan Poles' philosophy of like, that's I, I'm hiring the right guys here at coaches. We can coach these things. I see the actual raw talent. Um, but uh, again, with Caleb Williams, man, if he didn't exist, maybe I look at he set the bar so high for this particular draft class that if he didn't exist, I maybe look at some of these guys a little bit different. But you, we talked about his quick release. We talked about his accuracy. We talked about his strong arm. What pops out on his highlight tape is all of his out of structure stuff to a point where before I even took the deep dive, I was like, I mean. Are we really going to move on from fields from a guy who like all you see are these highlight plays? But then when you really look at the tape and you see what he does in structure, again, I, I don't know if I've seen someone at the college level be able to dissect the defenses the way he does, play in structure and on time the way he does since Andrew Luck. And to yeah. like to to a degree, yeah. uh, we we didn't see all that on CJ Stroud's tape, but he did that year one. Like I don't expect when I'm looking at at um, expectations, whether it be numbers or just the general feel of it, CJ Stroud is who I'm going to look to because I see a lot of similarities in what CJ Stroud did year one with the quick release on time, things being in structure, not wanting to run too much, just having, having a Wilson, general having fucking Chris feel Olave. for an offense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at, at, yeah, Caleb had Jordan Addison, who was a first round receiver two years ago. He didn't yep. have his best receiver is looked at as like a fourth round pick and it's the son of Jerry Rice. So it's not like another Marvin Harrison 2.0. He's just the, you know, the name guy like Jerry Rice's son is a fourth round pick. And that's that might be his highest receiver like or his best receiver last year. So there is a lot of that. Um, And yeah, I, I think if Bears fans see, oh, he holds the ball. It's just another Justin. Why did we even move on? I think I think Caleb holds the ball in a different way than Justin does. Whereas Justin was just. You, you were just screaming at your at your screen to just throw the ball, make the throw. Yep. It, it was almost like he was too scared to do that. It, it just, he wasn't comfortable with the reads he was seeing. He wasn't comfortable, um, you know, making those decisions where Caleb is, I think he can make, he can adjust to whatever offense he's in. And this offensive line is absolutely going to need to be, need to play a lot better with, with Caleb. They're not going to have Justin to bail them out the way that Justin has been bailing them out can I, on a lot of different plays last can year. Can I pause Go you ahead. there though, Jack? I will say, I think yeah. we really will see, and this may be why we haven't attacked the offensive line in free agency. Like we thought maybe Ryan Poles would, they may be looking at some of this tape and doing these grades and doing these breakdowns and saying, this pressure was on Justin. There were open players that sure. we, we consistently saw him not make throws, which again, to me, I don't want to keep laboring the point. That felt more like coaching aggression out of him because he started to play scared in a, in a manner he was not his rookie year or at Ohio State. Um, but they may be looking at that saying, if we have someone who can get the ball out on time in a situation, that's not an offensive line problem. So just, you can keep going, but I do want to make note of like, this offensive line may not be as bad as some people think. It, it, I think some yeah. of it, Oh, I don't think it's bad. I just think they need to play better than they than they have with with a guy. And that's you know, it's it's easier to it's easier to know that your guy has just elite level escapability. Like a guy can just turn a five yard sack into a ten plus yard gain. Like that helps. So 
we we will get I think we're gonna have a lot of clarity, a lot more clarity than we ever had with Justin, especially with the weapons Caleb is walking into. I mean, this is this this situation is just a dream scenario for a rookie yep. quarterback. Um, let's let's uh, let's start our list real for real, and, and we'll talk about our number fives. Um, I I kind of have a, a little bit of a tie down at the bottom, if I'm being honest. Uh, I I kind of have JJ McCarthy and, and Michael Penix kind of like right at the same tier. Um, who who I I know you're I know you're a big you're you're big. Maybe I should phrase this a little bit better, but we all know Frank likes the Phoenix, okay? Yeah, we, we know I do. how much he likes Phoenix. Um, no, I, I, I like, I like Michael Penix. I think it's going to be the scenario, you know. I think it's going to really matter where he gets drafted. Uh, whereas JJ McCarthy, I can see some good. Like I can see, I could see. Let's use a name that you threw out there, Alex Smith type quarterback. I can see that for. For J.J. McCarthy, he's still very young. Uh, he wasn't asked to do a lot at Michigan, but he did run a pro-style offense. Uh, from the throws that he can make, I, I've, I've liked some of the, the ball placement, the accuracy that he has. Uh, but just for, for context, which I thought was pretty funny, Matt Miller, his comparison for J.J. McCarthy was was Jake Plummer. And, and Jake Plummer threw for 20 touchdowns once. Uh, and also threw for 20 plus touchdown or 20 plus interceptions. Uh, one, two, three, four, five times uh, compared to like nine touchdowns, 17 touchdowns, 13 touchdowns, 15 touch. Like that is kind of a perfect comparison for what I think JJ McCarthy will probably end up being. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's far off. Um but he was not, I, I actually have, so me and you, I think, are viewing this a lot different. Um, my distant sixth was Bo Nix. Um, oh. Nothing particularly, like, so let, let, let me just sort of, as we go, like, break down what I look for, just in an initial standing. Something that, like, jumps out at me. And, and I think every one of these guys had something that I was like, oh, all right, he's got a little something at the pro level. When I watched Bo Nix, I saw a, a, run, a, a one read thrower just sort of a bland, like average to above average arm placement was like, okay, but I didn't see too many tight window throws. Um, I don't know. Everything about it just felt very bland for the NFL level. He's, he was a very good college quarterback, but I'm, I'm thinking like, how will this translate? And like, it was hard for me to even think of a, a, a pro comp for Bonix. It just felt like he's a third, fourth round pick. Would I be surprised if it's in year 13 and he's on like, is 12th contract, you know what I mean? Because he's just a, a lifelong backup. No, because I think he's smarter than he has a high IQ. But yeah, he he was he was my distant can I, six in that. Can I give you can I give you the Matt Miller comp and, and see? Who was, and who, who was his comp? Yeah. Yeah. So his comp his comp for Bo Nix, and I actually like Bo Nix. He he is my uh he is my fourth. So so not not too crazy, not not jumping, you know, too far ahead of ourselves here. Uh his his comp for Bo Nix was Dak Prescott. And I actually wow. kind of, I actually, I actually like that comparison, especially to what Dak was coming out of college. Um, and I'll just read you the quick excerpt, excerpt that he has on 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 uh, Bo Nix here. Scouts love players who battle through adversity, and that's what Nix did when he transferred from Auburn to Oregon. Once in Eugene, his game elevated to a no, new level over two seasons with a 22 and five record. Who cares? Uh, 8,101 passing yards, 74 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He, t- he only took 10 sacks over that time. Nix's timing, accuracy, and mobility out of the pocket, 799 rushing yards, excluding sacks, and, t- and 20 touchdowns on the ground over the past two seasons, have teams talking about him as a sleeper top 15 pick. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's a fair question to ask, you know, how much of the development at Oregon, you know, was on him, how much of it was coaching. Um, you know, I think he, I think he absolutely elevated Cause I remember he, when he, when he was at Auburn, he was kind of looked at as like maybe like a late round draft pick. Um, and then he went to Oregon. He sort of just started just dominating, playing way, way better. Uh, he's also a little bit older of a prospect, which I, I do wonder how that will translate, uh, to the NFL, um, as opposed to those younger prospects. I kind of like the Dak, the Dak comp. I, I think it's going to matter again, where he goes, but if he goes to a team like with the Raiders, 
I think he's done. I don't think he has a shot to, right, to develop right. with the Raiders. But if he goes somewhere, um, I don't know, like the Broncos, him and Sean Payton cooking something up together, I could see that. Listen, I could see that working out. If I, I know he's older, but I still it's forget age, just from his a skill set standpoint, I don't know if he's ready to start right away. I think of someone like the Rams, second, third round, right? Somewhere where you can yeah. sit a year or two. Um, be a backup, learn the, the Rams game. Rams may fucking trade up, dude. They they might they might trade up for one of these quarterbacks. Maybe I could yeah. see that happening. Yeah, they could. But I don't know. No, nothing really, nothing really jumped stood off, out to you. Stood out to me. No. Um, is is the DAC comp? How how far off would you say that it, is for you? To to be honest with you, it's hard to say because I didn't I didn't scout Dak out of college, so I, I don't know what I felt about him. Them, I'm just knowing seeing what I know of Dak now. I know he's the butt of a lot of jokes and things, but he's still a very good quarterback. Um, oof, I don't know. I Can wouldn't I tell you something kind of funny. What real quick? Because because your boy Mel Kiper is at it again. He says that he sees a lot of Drew Brees in Bo Nix. That's a weird comp because I don't see that at all. I don't see that. Don't see if that anyone, to be honest, I think, I think he's probably comping him to the to the Broncos thing, and he's saying he wants him to. Yeah, to go I to guess so. Sean Payton. If there was I, anyone, imagine, but I don't see Drew Brees. I don't see Drew Brees at all. No, if there, if there was anyone with a Drew Brees comp for me, it'd be Michael Penix. I, I think he has that just little. Not, he's not small, but like smaller in this draft class. Quick well, release. His his comp Matt Miller's comp for for Michael Penix was Tua. I, but that that was mine Which as well. Weird. But Tua Michael, also but got Penix Drew Brees is taller comps. than him, though. Yeah, yeah. Penix is what six one, six two. He is. Let's see. I usually write he down their height. Six, yeah, six two, two. Yeah, six two. He looked taller. He looked taller. He's bulkier. Like, well, that's me, that's why Jaden Daniels looks shorter because he's slender. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if you were to ask me who's taller between Jaden Daniels and and Michael Penix, I would have said Penix. Yep. Uh, here's the thing for for Penix. Um. I don't, I don't care about the left-handed stuff. I know I know some people make, make silly. a big deal out of yeah. that. Yeah, Tua has been one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and and he's left-handed. Who cares? Um, there was no like Tyreek Hill didn't stop being Tyreek Hill because he had a left-handed passer throwing him the football. Um, my biggest concerns for him are, are just like on the injury side. Yep, and Fair. and the coaching side for him, like like how much of coaching because because I mean for him obviously Roma Dunze, you know top going to be a top pick. Uh, Jalen Polk, also going to be a high drafted wide receiver either in the second or third round. He had a lot of weapons to work with, good system, good scheme. Um, so how much of that was was coaching, and is is he going to be able to stand up to NFL players? Yeah, you know, is, is he going to be able to stay healthy? So that'll be the biggest question for him. And and that was a similar concern with Tua as well, if you remember. And obviously Tua has had his his you know issues with with health so which I, I think definitely was better last year so glad to see that um uh, but yeah that that's my biggest con- concern for Penix probably in terms of skill set I would probably put him above JJ McCarthy but I do think JJ McCarthy is more like down the middle a safer pick like like he, he doesn't I don't think he has the super high ceiling but I definitely don't think he has like the super low floor that a guy like Zach Wilson had like, right. I think he's going to be pretty steady, especially because I think he's going to go to a team that has relatively good coaching, especially if it's a place like Minnesota. If if they trade up for him, I, I think he'll he'll be fine. I don't think he'll ever be like a like a all pro Pro Bowl quarterback or anything like that. But I think they'll they'll be able to win some games and, you know, continue going right down the middle with him. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So you're so you're six. Was you said with a tie between J.J. and Penix. Yep, and then okay. four was Bo Nix. My, right, and four four is Bo Nix. So my six was Bo Nix. I'll get I'll get to Penix in a second. My five was JJ McCarthy. Um, to be honest with you, this feel, you know how, like past drafts and past players, past situations sort of like catapult what other people got going on, or just the way you view different prospects. I mean, it's the same way that Zach will like Mahomes. You have to put it on his resume of greatness that he made Zach Wilson the number two pick of all time because he made this throw and they're like, oh my God, it kind of looked like Mahomes. <laughs> like, this guy's going to be great. Um, I feel that way about Brock Purdy and JJ McCarthy. Um, is similar, that similar sort of skill set. You're not trusted to do everything, but what you are trusted to do, you look really good. 
Um, I think JJ has a solid arm. I think what he was asked to do, he was able to to do it. He was accurate. Um, I thought his footwork was solid. But at the end of the day, it was so hard. It's very, like uh, maybe in these private workouts, he looks better, or you know what people are seeing, or maybe even what they thought of him coming out of high school. I don't know. But how are we to base even what his floor is when he wasn't trusted? To I don't want to say trusted. But that that's just the way that. Harbaugh coaches. He sort of, I mean, Andrew Luck was Andrew Luck, but like they ran the ball a fuck ton at Stanford. Like he just likes to do that. That That's his style of coaching. But for me, if I'm a top five team, I'm not comfortable taking JJ that high. Like it is. And if I just happen to miss out on him in this hidden, whatever, cool. Like someone else can have that. I'm not like how, how much of a curve or how much projection do you have to have to catapult him that way? Again, like the pro day, his arm, I think he has good arm strength. His ball placement is really good. But like just in terms of resume and reps and, and like throws, I, it's just not it's not there for me for me to Can rank I give him. you a stat. Can I give you a stat that'll that'll prove your point? Yeah, I'm ready for it. J.J. McCarthy ranks 66th in college football in pass attempts on third down. That's crazy. So he literally was not asked to throw on third down. Yeah. And it's like, I know there's a healthy balance. College coaches want to win games, right? Totally get that. So right. you're going to do what's best for the actual team. But if your quarterback isn't at what's best for the actual team in these moments, like how, how am I, how am I not to take away that you don't trust your quarterback? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I just, it's, I just don't, I just don't, this is, there's always one of these quarterbacks and I'm not, to be honest with you, Frank, if I were if I were the Jets, right, at, at in, in 2021 and and I and it was like JJ McCarthy or Zach Wilson, let's just say you're not taking any other quarterback. You have to pick between one of those two. I would pick JJ McCarthy because Agreed. I've actually seen more from JJ McCarthy. But he's than also I but even Zach Wilson. But look at the competition though. That, that that was why it became a joke and why I got yes. like really upset about it was because Trevor Lawrence, his he's getting critiqued on a bad game that he has against an actual elite team. Justin Fields, same thing. Matt, even Mac Jones. Like, I, I wasn't putting any of those dudes behind yeah. Zach Wilson. And then, like, here, Zach Wilson has a fucking bad game against Florida Atlantic or something. They're like, oh, well, you just excuse that one. It was rainy that right. day. Fuck that. Like, what are we talking like? And it's like, so it's just, it's that sort of that same thing. JJ, say what you will. We have our, we're clearly talking about the cons about him as a draft prospect, but he's at least made good throws and big time throws against actual good teams. And he actually has good in-game velocity. Like it's not oh, just 100%. about arm strength. It's not just about throwing the ball as far as you can, which was what everybody fall, fell in love with 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 Zach Wilson. Like JJ, I think can actually place the ball relatively well. Agreed. I just think the quarterback prospects in this draft can do it a lot better. Well, and again, it's also like a resume thing for me. I, I didn't even know that stat about being 66 yeah. and the, like that's nuts. This is college, dude. If, you, if yeah. you're that that low, you have that many low attempts in college. What are you going to do against an exotic blitz or or a uh, uh, post snap read? That's how I you don't know, understand in the NFL why, how you can feel comfortable trading up for him when you don't necessarily have all that information on him. Like I, yeah. I it, it like you said, if if I were a team, like I would be, I would rather take a shot on Penix or Bo Nix. And, and say, well, you know, someone else can can take a shot with JJ McCarthy and, and and see what they get. If I, man, if based off the the comments that Jim Harbaugh had about JJ McCarthy, if I were in a, a rival team, I'd be calling and saying, what do you want for Justin Herbert? What do you need for Justin Herbert? You can, you Washington, you can take the number two pick. We'll take Justin Herbert. You go get your boy JJ McCarthy, Jim Harbaugh. You can have him. Yeah, I would be too. Why the hell not? Get him, get him, you know, strike while the iron's hot. Here's your boy coming right out of college. You have the number five pick. You're probably going to be in position. Or if you're not, if if the Cardinals are going to trade back with someone, you're going to have to give up a lot less for them to be there at five and probably take Marv. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, yeah, I'm right there yeah. with you. Um, Who's so your four? I, my, my four, my, my four, here's where it's going to get controversial. My four is Jaden Daniels. Um, wow. I have, I have Penix higher. I have Penix at three. Is it because he's a running back? I'm no. surprised he made your list. Frank. No, no, no. It's so I, I, I honestly I have a weird. I how do I want to present this? If Jaden Daniels and Drake May uh, lightly, if J if, if Jaden Daniels and Drake May had like a baby that became a quarterback and they got their best qualities, it would be <laughs> fucking phenomenal. Because the the side. What is this podcast turning into? Listen. Huh? 
We're, we're LGBTQ B1 <laughs> friendly, baby. Um, Jaden, superb athlete. We, we see what he does with his legs. I see a lot. I, I also see a lot, and this is where I get conflicted with him. I see a lot of CJ Shroud. Like when he sees the ball, he lets it, he sees the throw, he lets it rip. Solid release. Uh, it, what, what seems like an above average arm. I don't think his arm's incredible, um, but his placement on balls is good. Where, where where things start to fall apart for me, and this could be a little bit of bias towards what happened with Justin Fields. His deep ball accuracy is phenomenal. Potentially even the best deep ball thrower in this class. But where I started to see him fall short was when he had to go through his reads. Middle of the field didn't seem to be seen very well. Intermediate and short passes, he didn't settle for a lot. He didn't always take what the defenses gave him. Um, but when the deep ball was there, he had it. And it's it's so hard for me to not look at him, his slender build, his reckless ability, you know, just the way he plays reckless. Um, and also just like, I, yeah, it, it's... I feel like he's going to hold the ball a ton in the NFL in the similar manner that Justin did, but he didn't have the size that Justin does to either get out of some of these sacks and certainly not stay healthy the way, I mean, even Justin had his injury problems. Um, he's, he, he's, he's, I, I, I think I ranked him a little bit lower because I think his floor is so low, but his ceiling, he has the ceiling to be the number two guy on this. If he reaches the ceiling, I think he'd be number two behind Caleb, but I think his floor is so low that he could be a complete bust after year one where you're like, okay, this guy's like not like, I can see him being Malik Willis legitimately just with his skill set. But again, I can also see him being, I mean, I don't even know who, I, it was hard for me to comp him as well. I I, I can see him so, being almost a Russell Wilson in Seattle first couple of years, that type of thing as well. Because he has those traits. So he's 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 a little bit, a little bit taller, a little bit more slender, about 10, 10 pounds lighter, two inches taller. I kind of, look at him as like a Robert Griffin, the third type quarterback, like mm -hmm. super ultra athletic. Um, Matt Miller comped him to Lamar Jackson, um, which I don't think is, is really that big of a surprise. Um, he was number, he was number, I have him three. So, so not, not super far off of, of where you're at, but again, I think it's really going to matter on where he lands, if he's going to reach his ceiling or not. Cause you know, what I've learned, you know, I, I, I I've watched Lamar from afar. I've never, I, I'm not a Ravens fan. I haven't been in the day-to-day -day stuff. I, I know a little, obviously I know how they tailored their offense to fit his run game. And then they wanted to get more out of the passing side. Um, you know, he's a two-time MVP. With, with the experience I had with Justin, I think it really opened my eyes to, and, and, and the way that teams were so afraid to trade for him as well, the whole, and, and, and whatever. Maybe Poles took a worse deal than he did. Maybe there were teams, but I highly doubt if there was a second round pick out there. Right, that, right. That Ryan Poles would have been like, "Well, uh, we'll still send you to the Steelers." Like, no, he would have. He would have sent them for the better for a second round pick. Let's not get it twisted. I think it really just matters if a coach, the, the, who who the coach is, and if they're willing to develop him that, and utilize the skill set given, and not try to force him to become something he's just not. I, I like. The NFL just can't seem to adapt to these to these types of, of running quarterbacks like and, and really commit to making it work outside of Baltimore. And and even then, you know, they they still haven't won a lot with Lamar Jackson. So, yep. you know, it, it, it will it actually work. So I, I'm I would be a little scared off that. And that's why I think Jaden Daniels, like like you said, he's, he's a very good deep ball thrower. I think he, he risks a lot with his running ability. Like he, he tries to play bigger than he is and that's not going to work in the NFL. Yeah. It's just, it's just not going to work. Um, so I agree with you. I think, I think the floor is, is lower, but I do think that ceiling is high. I could absolutely see him being the second best quarterback in this draft. I think it's really just going to matter where that landing spot is. And, and if the coaches that he's, you know, given are, are committed to making him, you know, getting the most out of him, I should say. Yep. Yeah. No. And the thing is, is like, the the way that I talked about Bo Nix being bland, nothing jumped off the screen. There were things about Jaden Daniels, make no fucking mistake, that absolutely right. jumped off. And that's why I do think he has a very high ceiling. I just think with his his reckless abandon, his his slender frame. But then again, what scared me was I just didn't see and again, this is just a learning experience from Mitch Trubisky. This is a learning experience from Justin Fields and like those classes around them. 
there wasn't enough in structure. And the stuff that was in structure, it was really good deep balls. You can play a certain system. Again, we we thought that you can... St I still think you can cater an offense to Justin Fields to play to those strengths. But you eventually have to progress. Otherwise, you end up like Russell Wilson. Like, Russell Wilson never really progressed past that. And year after year, it became holding the ball longer, holding the ball longer. You're going to lose your you're going to lose your athleticism eventually. And look at how far and a little bit older of a Russell Wilson just sort of crashed down. Like you need to start developing right. the intermediary, the 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 touch throws, the the short stuff. And if he gets that, he'll be phenomenal cuz I, again, I think he has a solid arm, good deep ball thrower. He's a, he's an awesome athlete. Um and, and fucking if he just slid every once in a while, maybe I would have had him up, but I mean <laughs> god damn, dude, he just like he takes so many unnecessary hits. It's yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, obviously third. Well, I shouldn't say obviously. Um, I, I would imagine your third is not is not Drake May. I would imagine it's Michael Penix, right? Yeah, my, my, Michael Penix is my third. I think you hit it right on the head. You're not a crazy person. <laughs> no, 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 no. Michael Penix, um, I see a lot of Tua in him. And I think even going back, again, Tua got a lot of the Drew Brees. I see that as well. And the things that jumped off the page, super quick release. Um, but I, th I, I thought what was most impressive about him is his ball placement. I mean, he, he wasn't scared of tight window throws. He lets it rip. He sees it anticipatory. I love that. I think that, I think to me, that's what raises the floor for a prospect. And that's the difference that that was the difference between him and Jaden. Does he have as high of a ceiling as Jaden? No, I don't think he does, but he has a much higher floor where I can see this guy at the very least, like his floor to me is a bridge quarterback to another guy in three or four years. And then potentially like a Gardner Minshew type of career where you can plug and play every now and then be a really high level backup. But I, I, and that to me, again, that's floor. I think he does have his floor isn't his ceiling. He has a higher ceiling than that. I think he can be a starter for years to come. I think he's going to be more of a product of what's around him. I don't think you'll necessarily win so many yeah. games because of him. You'll win with him. Um, I was right there with you. I think the, he needs, I, I think he needs a good offensive line because I don't think he handles pressure very well. He's it's a Agreed. lot of clean. He he's gonna need a clean pocket, much much like Tua. To be completely yep. honest, um, I, I think he's gonna need that to be to be successful. He also, if we're being honest, I think he's the least athletic player of these six. Like he doesn't yes. evade pressure yes. in the same manner that Agreed. anyone else on this list does, including Bo Nix, who and a lot of that is probably the injuries to probably to so. his legs that he's had. And that was that was my <laughs> next point. Obviously, the biggest thing, injury prone. What is he had two ACLs? Uh, in six years or yeah. five years. I mean, it's so he's had that. But I, I think the biggest thing that held him back from being number two for me, because to be honest, some, some of the traits I liked more even than Drake May. Sure. Um, he doesn't have as much touch. I, I thought even Jaden Daniels had better touch than him with the bread basket throws. Like Michael Penix sort of throws with one velocity. He has a very strong arm and he's not fucking scared to use it. It reminded me a lot of Jay Cutler. Like, I'm just going to fucking let this yeah. bitch rip. Um, or even, you know, you know, what's a better comp Colin Kaepernick in that manner where it's like, everything is a laser. Mm, everything okay. is a laser. Everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you see the arm talent. It's like, Colin, put a little fucking loft on that thing. And maybe you complete it every, you know, a little bit more. Um, and, but it was also strange to see though. Cause there would be like intermediary passes that were just like fucking bullets that were still yeah. like right where they needed to be. I'm like, dude, just like take a, throw a change up every now and then Michael, like, what do we do? Um, take the heat off a little bit. Yeah. Take the heat off a tad, but he, he was my number three. I ha I'm going to be honest with you, Jack. Um, I hate that I sounded as down on Jaden as as I do because if I had to tear it off, Caleb is a franchise guy to top me. Tier. He is top yeah. tier. He's he's a prospect you don't get every draft. But the three guys that I've had in almost like start pretty immediately, I I, I think could have a lot of success in this league. I don't know what you would call that long term starter type of thing. I did I had Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and Michael Penix, and then. Bo Nix, I look as more of a backup. JJ, even though I ranked him higher than Bo Nix, was more of like an unknown. It was very hard for me to play. Sure. So that those were like my overall tier. So it, 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 there wasn't much separating two, three, and four for me. But Penix did land at three uh, for me. Yeah. So obviously, two for us is uh, is is Drake May. Um, I've seen obviously the biggest comp being Justin Herbert. Uh, I saw some Josh Allen comparisons to just. I didn't uh, see that at mobility. all. To be honest with you. Um, yeah, not not a lot of Josh Allen. Um, definitely a big arm. I would probably say one of the stronger arms in the class, if not the strongest. Uh, only twenty six starts in college, so uh, get your get your Mitch comparisons out there, UNC quarterbacks. Um, 
there's some things I really like about Drake May. Um, and I think his ceiling is also is is high in, in terms and in a different way that Jaden's is, which is why I have him as my number two. Um, I like Drake May. I, I wouldn't love if my team drafted him. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't love it. Um, there's just not a lot uh, known about him, and I don't love the way he underthrows a lot. Like he's he's behind a lot of throws. Um, but the, some of the throws, some of the creativity that he has is also, there's this one play I'll never, I, like, it just catches my eyes every single time where he, he throws it with his left hand for, for a touchdown. Like, I'm like, damn, like that's, I like that. I don't know. I don't know why, but he also does a very good job of leading receivers. He's very rarely ever under throws a ball. It's usually just behind guys and just maybe not the best accuracy on the intermediate stuff. Um, and the short game as well. But I like the mobility he has. I think he's more athletic than you'd realize. Um, I don't. I don't think he's Justin Herbert. I, I think he's maybe like Justin Herbert light. But I could see his ceiling being high. I, I do like Drake May. That that wasn't a great selling point, but <laughs> he, he definitely. I'll just say it. He he he's he's quarterbacky. He's the low, he's yeah. He's definitely quarterbacky. quarterbacky. Um. Yeah. So the point that I thought you were going to make, the, the behind throws, the, this is what scares me. It's not, it's the reason why I think he throws behind guys a lot. He has the longest release out of any of these guys. He has yeah, a little bit of a wind up, up is, on him. Is, is rough. It's... And that's what scares me the most. But what I do like is what you talked about is his, I think his play within structure is good. He has a strong he arm. pressure probably the best outside of Caleb. Agree. In the pocket. I think those two, th 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 that's what made me sort of distinguish one and two from everyone else when I started to make order is, well, I guess, you know, the thing that I didn't touch on with Jaden, this is what scares me the most about Jaden besides his um, reckless play. He bails on a lot of clean pockets because he gets the spooks. Yep. The, the two that I did not see that nearly as often were Caleb and Drake. And that's where I'm like, that you need that in the NFL. You Not only do you need to know like when NFL open is with receivers, you need to know what a clean pocket is, even if it's a little bit muddy. And they weren't scared to stay in those muddy pockets. And I thought that was a really big plus for Drake May. But that that long release, it I know Herbert's the comparison for a lot of people, and I see it. The, si the size is ideal. I, I, if Caleb right. had his size, we would no one would even be talking about any of these other quarterbacks. You would be talking about like the Minnesota Vikings giving like every executive giving their first son to, to the Bears executive. Like it would be absurd if, if Caleb had that sort of size. Um the arm strength is there. The one thing that I couldn't distinguish was he seems like he seems like a one read guy. That was when he did get flustered was when his, and it wasn't even like if his one read was covered, it was when his first read, like the defense did something to it that he wasn't expecting. And it made me think like, how well is that going to translate to post snap stuff in the NFL? That's what scares me the most with him. Um, but in terms of arm talent, and eventually things have to like separate, that was what separated it with me. I think he has better arm talent than both Penix and Jaden Daniels, but not nearly as much as Caleb. I think that's where, you know, th those differentiators were. Um, I, his floor, which may be a good thing to some people, it's not necessarily to me. I saw some Will Levis in there, and that was what scared us from Will Levis, just mm -hmm. that sort of, mm -hmm. that tape. Longer release, but really good size. Ballsy in the pocket. Very athletic. I mean, I, I think... Drake may be the second best athlete behind Jaden Daniels on this list, to be honest with you, with Caleb being third, just pure athleticism. Um, but he has all, all dude. If Jaden Daniels would have fucking slid three times on the tape that I saw, I'd probably have him above Jake, Drake may like, <laughs> but it, it's, you know, the, the size is there. Cause these guys are going to take hits. These guys are going to be confused fairly consistently as rookies. Right. And yeah, you know, He's built to take those hits a little bit better than someone like Penix and Jaden Daniels. There's, you know, there's things that just have to sort of separate things. But all these guys have bust ability, man. I think the only one who, the, the guy that I don't see it with, and I, I for for the purposes of this episode, I hate that he's going to be a bear. I love that he's going to be a bear for being a Bears fan because I'm not saying that because he's going to be a bear. His tape is just so right. fucking incredible. We didn't say this about Justin coming out. You know what I mean? Like we didn't right. say this about Mitch. We didn't say this about these guys. Like. It's it's the the tape speaks for itself, and I just see fatal flaws that these guys are going to have to work on if they want to be elite franchise guys. Agreed. 
Yeah, so just a quick a quick recap uh, of our of our five uh, or six, I suppose, if you will. I had Caleb, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, O Nix, Michael Penix, JJ McCarthy, Frankie. What were your uh, What were your five? Caleb six, Williams one, whatever it was. Drake May two, Michael Penix three, Jaden Daniels four, uh, JJ. McCarthy five and Bo Nix six and the guy that everyone's going to fool themselves into thinking he's good when he's not is Joe Milton because he has the strongest arm in this draft <laughs> Joe Milton just screams backup quarterback doesn't he the yeah. little running ability Tyrod yeah. Taylor maybe I Henry Spot Burris starter? he's gonna go to Canada and fucking dominate that's his comp for me maybe but we won't have to worry about that because we're getting fucking Caleb Williams best quarterback in the draft it's gonna be great LGBTQ plus one QB one <laughs> we got <laughs> oh, I hate this. We, I hate this. If draft they make shirts, I'm, I'm so if they make shirts, I'm buying it. Buying it. Yeah, we might have to give one for the show and we'll wear it on draft night. Uh this has been the Bear With Us podcast. I'm Jack. He's Frank. Hopefully Nas can uh can can get on here and share with us his his quarterback. He'll probably he's probably still scouting. Probably he's probably waiting until this fucking till guy right before the draft. Yeah, this he, fucking he, guy. he's on his D two list now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, we'll be back next week with uh, hopefully some more draft rankings. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the Bear With Us podcast. Later, Jackie. Later, everybody.